MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at Splunk's dot conference 2015. Hashtag Splunk Conf, C-O-N-F, Splunk C-O-N-F. Go to crowdchat.net slash Splunk Conf and join the conversation. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Alan Tucker, manager of Central, HelpNet Central Systems at Indiana University. Welcome to theCUBE, appreciate Thanks it. Thank you. So besides having great sports and a, a rabid fan base, which we like to watch on, during uh, basketball season. Yeah. Um, University, great use case. Hardened infrastructure, IT, yep. a lot of operations, certainly provisioning <laughs> and yeah. having security. Yeah. Um, first, the first question everyone wants to know is, what's the bandwidth like of the students? How, how much fat pipe do they have? Well, uh, right. it's, it's gorgeous, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, there's actually 10 gig fiber in between uh, campuses, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. <laughs> we don't have to worry too much about. Uh, no rural broadband problems at the university. No, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love the bandwidth. Yes, yes. Um, so what's the challenge for IT ops? Obviously security, I mean, anyone who knows. Yeah, so our main challenge, um, and actually really the reason why we went with Splunk was um, to, to solve a very niche issue, um, which was policy compliance for um, IU IT policies. So IU, because it's effectively so large, it's very, very distributed on the server side. Mm -hmm. um, so very departmental focus, um, lots of servers. Actually, there are about 5,200 servers in the IU infrastructure uh, between in one data center or disparate data Dis centers. Yeah, disparate. Uh, definitely in servers in, under the desk or or rogue it, yes, servers. Yes, those as well. Yeah, so it, it can, um, yeah, it can range all over the map. So <laughs> yeah, so there's actually a, a data center in Bloomington. There's a data center in Indianapolis. The majority of them are in those. Um, you will see the occasional server under the desk, but I think you would probably see that in every higher education. Yeah, because you got research going on, all kinds of stuff, that's, and also that's right. you know, hackers. Yeah. How about the students? I always want to know, what's the latest and greatest on, you get all that gig of bandwidth, mm -hmm. servers putting up servers in their room, you guys close well, that down? I don't think we really see all that much. I mean, the, the, the networking team does a pretty good job um, uh, uh, just trying to keep that down as much as possible. Um, we so know that gaming is an issue, so um, there are actually gaming networks and things like that that we've tried to isolate some of that data in there. Um, but yeah, this, it, the, the, the Splunk side of the house is really trying to um, really get into a, the, a, a helpful compliance area um, related to these IT files. Give an example of what challenges you have and where Splunk solves. Sure, so um, because it's so distributed and there are so many different server owners, and we're talking 112 different IT departments throughout the scope of, uh, of IU. And um, because there's so many servers, the ownership of those is not consolidated into one central IT department. Because of that, um, IU puts out IT policies for best practices, um, you know, basically things like uh, deployment of firewall rules and um, just overall Pretty, pretty standard generic uh, practices, and of those uh, best practices is log management and log review. And Splunk has actually been able to help us deploy a solution that is enterprise ready, um, that these department, these departmental IT professionals can use to uh, be compliant and, and aligned with IU IT policy. So, so it's reducing the, the risk factor all across the board throughout Just the state. To to, to boost it into the um, sort of the less technical part of our audience, the log management and review, is that where you'll be looking at um, sort of access control sort of events or? Yeah, so uh, the, the IT policy focuses yeah. on four very uh, specific areas. So it's um, successful and failed user login accesses and successful and failed file accesses. Um, so, and the review of that on a consistent basis has been an area that that uh, people have just struggled with, frankly. So um, file access was the other one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds it, actually pretty pragmatic, which is we want to hold on to these key capabilities and you guys can go take care of the rest. That's correct, yeah. The, the main uh, reason for deployment really is that 
there are costs associ associated with log review, right? So the, you're, it's very timely, time consuming. Um, if d a department were to spin up a solution that would help them do it, it's going to be costly again on, on just a, a price structure. Um, so what we heard consistently was central IT needs to put out a service that we can do this. And right. it, the, the, the flip side to that is that the departmental IT provider is then more focused on their department. And it's basically bringing, bringing the, the labor back. Yeah. So I got to ask you a question. I asked everyone the same question for the next two days, so I'll yeah. be the first one I'm going to ask. I okay. asked the banking guy earlier. Um, what's the role machine learning's playing for your job? How does that affect you, if any? You see the big data machine learning, some of those automations working for you? Yeah, some of the automation. Um, it's That's sort of a, a hard question to ask because, or question to answer. Um, it's actually not an area that we are directly focused on right now um, because we're really trying to, to focus on the support layer um, and providing uh, information that is directly beneficial to the departments and as well as the support division throughout IU. So that's the core volume of what you guys are dealing with on the help side is inbound, hey, I don't, my Cisco routers aren't working. That's right. Or yeah. hey, Wi-Fi's not working in my room. Yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever the use that, case could yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely right, yeah. So um, all of those areas actually, and being able to provide a solution that um, fixes a very specific need. And, and at, at this point, um, you know, Splunk can do so much. <laughs> and frankly, we we have been a Splunk user for over a year, but our deployment to out to the, these departments has only been in the last three months. So we're just now starting to see these uh, great benefits as well as great potential. Like for, what, give me some examples. Uh, well, the, the IT12 policy alignment thing is an absolute Huge. win, but um, in terms of IT operations, I mean, we're talking Exchange and Active Directory and firewalling and networking, and so it, it's it's all across the board. Um, but as well as just very specific to departments, so things like um, we have this very very specific application that was built within a single department. Can we pull logs off of it and give them direct dashboarding that helps them, you know, make uh, qualified decisions on the information that's coming through it? So would it be fair to say that you're pulling off more and more of the management activities, the IT ops activities that uh, um, were done sort of out on the 112 departments? Now that you have the infrastructure in place that went in for security, um, it just becomes easy to take that, essentially the same log data, and present that back. That's correct, yeah. And as it sits right now, we're actually only ingesting events that are specific to those um, IT policy requirements. And so um, it's very interesting that we have over 2,000 servers in this environment, but we're only actually on a license that is under 50 gig because we're parsing and dropping off so much information. So, um, but to, to more to your question is, um, we, have, we basically will sit down with departments and talk to them about their needs and use cases and figure out what it's going to take and how much ingestion we need to um, you know, really plan for. What's the big challenge in higher ed, big picture, things that you see Splunk helping you guys out with that you're working on towards? I think one of the largest um, challenges for higher ed, especially in the security realm, is, is how open the environments are. Um, there's always a researcher that wants to uh, pick up the research and give it to somebody else. Or, um, just, and it's a sharing economy, right? That's, that's about exactly gaming, right. you're talking about networks. Yeah, yeah and sharing, it, and <laughs> sharing things in security don't necessarily mix all the time, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, so that is a, a really big challenge. Um, and, and we're just focused on trying to trying to give these departments the, the tool sets that help them continue to so do I gotta ask job. you, what's it like for college kids these days? A lot of Instagram, a lot of video, a lot of gaming. What what's the number one utility with all that broadband? I mean it's like it's like having like a water spring in your backyard. Mm -hmm. It's like unbelievable, you know, thirst quencher for people who are broadband starved, you know, you guys yeah. have a ton of bandwidth. Yeah. So what's, I don't, what's springing out of that? I don't think that there's necessarily like a, a killer app that, <laughs> that we use. You know, it's um, the, the central IT organization is very distributed as well. I mean, we have uh, great industry industry leaders in the five divisions throughout our, our central IT organization, and we just hope that every single one of those departments really slams it home, you know. But people are taking advantage of the bandwidth, stadiums, 
throughout the universities, go yeah. to a basketball game. I think they are. Uploading Instagram it, photos, doing live streaming. You know, frankly, I, I'm not sure that the Instagram and the, the, the YouTubes and Netflix are really uh, on the radar of really what, um, yeah, it, it's, I don't think that in the scheme of things, I don't think that that's the killer, the, the killer network bandwidth issue. Um, I think that there are probably other areas in terms of sending large amounts of data across the, univers the university as well as throughout the state and, and the world. Um, that is probably more. And that's coming from the, actually part of the academic side, you yeah, say? Yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah, so the in, the in the research side, yeah. Well, I was just going to ask on that, what sorts of things, I know, you know, it's sort of ARPANET, the precursor to the internet, mm -hmm. sort of took shape with research universities sharing huge amounts of data. Mm -hmm. What sorts of things are you guys you know, saturating that 10 giga, gigabit link with? Uh, you know, frankly, that that isn't necessarily my my area of but expertise. Is, is Splunk is Splunk helping to manage that? At this point, it's not, but that's definitely on the roadmap. Um, it, you know, we Indiana University helps administer the the Internet Two <laughs> network and um, the the global knock that's associated with that. And so, um, we'll definitely be looking at trying to integrate some of, of Splunk into that over the next, you know, upcoming years. But it, at this point, we're just not, we're barely scratching the surface, you know. <laughs> All right, so give us, give us the audience a taste of the Splunk conference, your experience with the product. What's the vibe here? What's your take of the growing Splunk ecosystem? We got a lot of loyal customers. You're, yeah. you're very loyal to the, yeah. customer, the product you said. But what's the vibe here for the folks that aren't at the event? Oh, the, the vibe is great. I mean, everybody is, uh, you know, talking to each other and very excited about the new products that are coming in. Um, the, the the keynote this morning was fantastic. I think everybody was very excited about, um, you know, the, the user analytics and things like that, the, the, the intelligence piece that they're coming out with. And um, we have had some, some great uh, social events, especially throughout the higher ed uh, area, and, um, talking to some other universities and Good people. networking. Oh, absolutely great, great networking. Um, there are a lot of areas of overlap between universities, and I think that we can do uh, definitely do a lot more to share best the, practices. The, yeah, well, it's best practices as well as application development. Um, you know, for example, uh, it, there are tons of universities that are using central authentication services with uh, Shibboleth, and there really is not an app. You're not going to find that on Splunk Base, right? So, <laughs> so to to come together and try to to actually develop something like that, I think is a, a great. Uh, a great thing. And inter, inter um, or within the higher ed community, there's a lot of sharing on research as well, collaboration, tapping in the virtual space as well, or online. The, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the way with Splunk, it's, it, higher ed is interesting with Splunk because there, there aren't turnkey solutions, frankly. And, and so, um, uh, spinning up the infrastructure and everything, that, that took some time for us, but, um, Really, the majority of our focus right now is being in the app development area and trying to figure out, you know, what is meaningful and how we parse off this data and it really uh, use case scenarios and things like that. So it gives you guys more agility now. Higher ed used to be kind of slower on the because there's so much going on with the provisioning of the of the, of the networks, right? I mean, yeah, so absolutely. Now you're really full blown application shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we'd get there, but you know. <laughs> what is it? You said something interesting where you're 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 now focused all on application development. What's changed? What are, what are some of those? Um, you know, a lot of it is very proof of concept things, like like I mentioned about you know the Exchange app and Active Directory app, and um, it, it's it, oh, it's not new things. It's putting them under management. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that, that's okay. correct. And as well as going forward into custom app development, um, we have done some of that on the departmental level, but not not a ton. But that's definitely a, a direction that um, we are. You know, that's where I see the benefit being the greatest, frankly, in in saving departments a lot of time throughout throughout the state. All right, uh, we're gonna break there, Alan. Appreciate it. But give us a little insight and color on the final word in the segment about. Indiana, yeah, your environment, the school, the vibe, people generally happy with everything, what's going on? Give us some peek inside yeah. that culture. Uh, well, the, the culture's great always in Indiana. <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we have great uh, great sports teams, yeah. we have a uh, wonderful campus. I mean, it's beautiful every, every, uh, every season, so we're excited. Awesome. 
Uh, we are here live at Splunk Commerce. We'll be back with more customer testimonials and more customer insight, sharing their perspectives and their data of what they're working on here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.